Brace yourselves, my filament fanatics. Today, we're diving into the modular marvel that's taking the Makerverse by storm, Gridfinity. The grid that fits your fixations, fortifies your formations, and fights clutter with flair. Whether you're a 3D printing prodigy or a PLA Padawan, I'll show you how to print, tweak, and triumph in this grid-based galaxy of glorious organization. From bins to boxes and every build in between, welcome to Gridfinity for Dummies, where we're turning your chaos into control, one satisfying 3D print at a time. I have no idea how Zach does this on a regular basis. That was so difficult to do. That's right, we're gonna be doing a Gridfinity video specifically for anybody that's getting started with this or don't even know what Gridfinity is or how to get started with it because if you're like me, you might need a dummy's guide to this, but it's not that complicated. This was all started by Zach Friedman, which I was trying to emulate here in some of his videos, and it's just gone off in a wild direction here over the past, what, year or two since this is inception, and there are so many different files that are available online that the community has built and has just really embraced this idea of creating these grids to really help organize everything and anything. The basic idea behind this is you print a grid that serves as the base foundation for this project. Now you can print as many of those or in different sizes and quantities that you might need to fill whatever drawer that you might be working with, wherever you're trying to organize. And then comes the fun part where you can end up 3D printing different bins that will go into those different grids, which is hence, you know, the gridfinity. You can infinitely print these different grid combinations in different heights and sizes and widths and number of bins that are within the bins. It's kind of crazy. Then people have all also created tool insets for specific other objects, whether it's flush cutters or calipers or screwdrivers or chicken wings. And we'll get to how I made that one here in a few minutes. But there are, again, endless options when it comes to the different files that people have already made online that are freely sharing that you can run off and start downloading and printing right now. That's the best part of this entire project is that there is just a wealth of files freely being shared online for you to start accessing and printing within this project. Now to get started, we're gonna need a set of these base grid files that we can have scaled accordingly to fit whatever storage container that we're gonna be working with. And for me, specifically, I'm working with something really exciting that I have not seen any Gridfinity products made available for yet. And to do that, I'm gonna be working with these mini toolboxes that I picked up from Harbor Freight that are gonna be the perfect example for me to work with while creating a custom set of Gridfinity files that work with these toolboxes here that I have not been able to find any files for directly online. And these mini toolboxes have three different storage areas, the very top cabinet, and then we have a shallow drawer up top, and then we have a deeper drawer on the bottom. Now, one thing that's gonna help you immensely with any of these Gridfinity projects is a set of digital calipers so that you can accurately get some measurements of anything that you're trying to end up storing in one of these containers. But there's actually a 3D printable ruler. This is a Gridfinity ruler <laughs> that is specifically designed in mind for all of these different grid fernity projects. So you can know exactly how many grids you're gonna need on the bottom, whether it's the length and width, or what height for these bins that you're gonna need for any particular object that you're working with. And just as a real world example, here's a set of these little flush cutters, and I can see when they're pressed together, they're just over one bin wide, and they are just over three bins long. This lets me know exactly how many bins I'm gonna need to have created to potentially store these flush cutters in our system here. And using our mini toolbox plus our Gridfinity ruler, I can see exactly how many grids I'm gonna be able to fit in this top opening. This looks like it's just barely able to fit six by three here. So I'm gonna have a little bit of an extra space along the sides, but we can also do that for each of these individual drawers as well. And again, there is a plethora of file options already pre-created and ready for you to download and print. Specifically over on printables, I'm looking at this grid and bin option that's just a master template of a variety of different sizes and options. So I was able to find the six by three grid, download that and start printing it over on my Elegoo Neptune 4 3D printer. And Elegoo also happens to be the sponsor of today's video. They're the makers of the Neptune 4, the Neptune 4 Plus, and the Neptune 4 Max 3D printers, ranging in size and price to fit your printing needs. They also make some ridiculously nice and affordable filament, and if you haven't tried it yet, you are seriously missing out. Elegoo's also running a holiday contest along with Meshi AI from now until December 18th, where you can get a chance to win some 3D printers along with some other prizes. Make sure to check out the links down below for that contest, as well as other links for Elegoo's products. Now it fits, but there's 
there's a lot of wiggle room on the sides and I wanna try and modify these files or create my own files so that it's a perfect fit for this drawer. And to customize this, you typically would have to go into Fusion 360 or some other 3D modeling program and build out your own set. However, this community is absolutely insane and amazing and someone has created a web tool that's gonna to allow you to just go on, set your parameters and it's gonna generate your grids as well as custom bins for you. I should also mention there is a really active Reddit community posting all sorts of tips and tricks and other things. This is where I found a wealth of information while starting on my Gridfinity journey just recently. So within the Gridfinity generator web app, there are two core functions for you to work with. One is to generate the bins. And then the other that we're gonna be focusing on here at the moment is creating our custom base. And thanks to the Gridfinity ruler that I used along with my mini toolbox and those drawers, I know that I'm gonna need five columns and three rows. Plus if I use my digital calipers or a basic measuring tape, I can see exactly how wide I need these drawers to be, which I can use in the base length and width sections. Since the width doesn't need to be adjusted, I can just put the values into the width. This is gonna provide me with a wider border on the side for my grids. I can then download that file and then send it to my 3D printer again and get that printed. Now check this out. I can use this chop drawer now and it's a slightly wider side here to our grid and it should pop right into place and there's no more wiggle with that grid. Now for the bottom row, this one had to be slightly further adjusted with the sides, but this one now also should just slide right into place and there's very little wiggle room now with that bottom grid. Obviously, I also had to do the top row as well, which is a much chunkier set of a grid here on all sides of the border, but now I have the proper six grid by three grid orientation for this top panel of our mini books. And once you have your grid printed, obviously we're gonna wanna print some bins for this. And again, there are a plethora of bin options depending on what you're looking to have printed and placed directly in here. However, if you wanted to create your own custom set of bins, we can also use that exact same generator that we used previously to create our grids, but this time to create our bins. We can again set the number of rows and columns that we want for this different size options for our bins. You can also set the height for each of the bins, as well as if you want them to have tabs or completely hollow or the base style to include magnets or not to include magnets. There's even a stacking bin option. So if you wanted to be able to stack multiple bins on top of each other, you can do that as well. One other really fun thing that I went and did that I saw based off of someone else's post over on the Gridfinity Reddit group is created these dual color bin options just by inserting a pause command on my print and then swapping out the filament. No special multicolor 3D printer needed, but obviously that makes things a little bit easier if you do have one of those. But once I have all these printed, you'll see we can start organizing our storage bin here with all of these different grid bin options that I've gone and printed that should allow me to store lots of different little knickknacks and doodads here within this mini toolbox. Now the bin storage is great. However, I wanna have some actual custom fitted tools and things that are gonna go directly into this mini toolbox for my specific needs. And more specifically, I have this DJI Osmo Pocket 3 camera along with some of the accessories that I wanna have printed and stored directly in this mini toolbox. And thankfully, as I've mentioned, there are some amazing people out there that have already created some Gridfinity models that will work directly with this. However, the problem that I have with this particular design that I found online, while it works fantastic and is amazing, for storing some of these tools here and accessories. It's all vertically storing some of these and it's not gonna allow me to easily insert this into the bottom drawer, which is where I wanna store this camera. Now when it comes to creating a custom insert for something like this camera here, there's unfortunately no simple way of going about this or automated way of doing it. Your best solution is gonna be breaking out a ruler or a digital caliper like this, plus your Gridfinity ruler and manually taking some measurements and building that out in something like Fusion 360 or Shaper 3D or any other tool that you might have access to. Now, one thing that I did have access to that I purchased last year via Kickstarter was Shaper Trace, which allows you to trace an object 
object on a piece of paper, then take a picture and it will automatically create the outline of an SVG for you of whatever that object is. And in theory, it works really well. However, the sizing doesn't quite convert over correctly when I bring that into any software with that SVG file. And it's really hard to have clean lines when using something like a Sharpie or anything like that, where you're still gonna end up having to digitally clean up some of the inking marks that you've made in this sketch. Not to mention this thing goes for about $100 now versus, I don't know, what is this, $10, $12 for a pair of digital calipers. I also ended up using Tinkercad, which is a free online 3D modeling tool, which allowed me to further build out these base inserts for my camera. And I was able to design two different base plate options for my camera, depending on how I want this setup to be. The first one allows me to use the full case and store that directly on a larger build plate surface here that is three by four bricks long, along with all of the other accessories directly on that. And the one that I think I'm actually gonna end up using is this more slimmed down version that just holds the camera and its accessories, not the case. And it's a two by four grid along with a single grid option for one of the smaller accessories. This also allows everything to lay flat directly in the grid, which is perfect for that bottom drawer. Now I would say the easiest approach to creating a custom bin is if you actually have a 3D model of the object that you're trying to create a bin for, like these chicken wings that I previously 3D modeled. So I was able to take that exact same file and bring it directly into Tinkercad and hollow out some of those bases to create an insert option for the chicken wings. Also, it helps if you scale things up ever so slightly to give it a little bit more room, as well as adding in some other custom shapes to help things fit a little bit better. But that ended up allowing me to have my own custom set of Grinfinity bins to store my 3D printed chicken wings. Why I would need this, I don't know. It was just something fun and goofy that I could go and make. But what I'm really hoping is that this video helps some of you out there get started on your Grinfinity journey and feel like it's not so overwhelming to get started with this. This is a really simple, straightforward process using some of the tools that I've outlined in this video. And again, before you go off and print anything, just do a quick search over on Printables or Maker World or wherever you wanna look at for your files because there is a wealth of free files that have already been created and are actively being shared by this amazing Gridfinity community. And obviously I'm gonna be sharing the files that I've created for this mini toolbox. So if you end up picking up one for yourself, you have a starting point for all the Gridfinity fun. I also want to say a huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support. If you're interested in things like the 3D printer settings that I use for my Neptune 3D printers, you can find those over in my Patreon. Also from now until the end of December, any tips or donations that I receive will be going directly to my son's middle school to help out any families that can't afford to send their kids on the upcoming spring trip to Washington, D.C. I'm also going to be personally matching any donation that I receive, all going directly to those families. And if you have any other tips or tricks on creating your own custom set of grid infinity files, let everybody know down in the comments below because I'm I'm obviously still learning all about this, but wanted to share what I've been learning along the way here over the past handful of days of starting my Gridfinity journey. Hey, thanks so much for watching all, and I'll see you next time. Bye now. Brace yourselves, my filament fanatics. Today we're diving into the modular marvel that's making, <laughs> where we're turning your, where we're turning your chaos, where we're turning your chaos into, cha where we're turning your chaos into control, one satisfying 3D print at a time. Brace yourselves, my filament fanatics. Today, we're diving into the modular marvel that's taken the Makerverse by storm, Gridfinity. The grid that fits your fixations and fortifies your formations and fights clutter with flair. This is so hard to read these things back.